Welcome to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. I'm so excited for season two and the great guests you're going to hear from, their struggles, how they overcame their struggles, their triumphs. Through personal and business life, I think they're tied together and we're going to share great stories about that. This show isn't just about me. It takes a lot of good people working with me. Among them is my partner, 87 Network and Clay Hicks. Building relationships, building community is the mission of H7 Network. They want to create a network of champions where everybody wins. Find out more at h7network.com. And we hope to motivate you, inspire you, and educate you through our show. Enjoy the show. We'll talk to you on the other side. Welcome, everyone. This is Steve Ramone, your host to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. And I'm super excited. I've known uh, this guest for about six months, and he's doing some great things. He's he's truly a servant. I, I thought I was a connector, and this guy's a connector with his heart. And he's connecting freely with people and networking. And we were just talking about before the show how important it is. shouldn't be your whole life, but you should be connecting with people. Hey, Lewis, welcome to the show. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm excited to talk about this topic. We were talking about it earlier. It's emotional for people, but foreclosures. Let's dive into it, why you got into it and what you're doing. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, my wife and I just moved out here to Reno. We wanted to start our own investment portfolio. And so um, we got into some education uh, to the sub two community. Um, and uh, basically, we've been, I've been reaching out to uh, distressed homeowners and, uh, either going door to door or texting them or calling them and just interacting with them and, and kind of, um, approaching it from a different, uh, perspective and mindset. Um, just the philosophy behind it being, um, treating them like your, uh, uh, like your mom or your aunt, right? Like making sure that you go through all of their, their options. Um, so yeah, so, Got, got into it, you know, for, for ourselves, but as we've been doing the work, I found it's been really rewarding and really tough for some really tough conversations. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a huge need out there. There's a lot of people that don't know what all their options are. Um, so thank you for, you know, having me on here, being able to share, um, and, and educate on, on this. No, topic. and Lewis, I love how you say it's a tough conversation. Because like we talked about earlier, finances and and how and real estate, housing, are two of them. Do you have a house? Your yep. rent, you know, uh, are you gonna buy a home? What do you do? A lot of questions out there. I know it's a complex move. So walk me through what somebody would do that their house is being foreclosed. I would assume is, is what happening, and then you connect with them. And what do you do? Yeah. So uh, you know, let's say you're you're going through foreclosure, Steve, and mm -hmm. we, you know we connect. Um, and you, you share with me, right. Um, cause when I go and I knock on these doors, it, it, you know, you, you don't just go like, Hey, you're going, you're in foreclosure right now. <laughs> so you open up to me and we build a relationship. You share with me, Hey, I'm, I'm going through some tough time going through foreclosure. Um, you know, I have software where I already know kind of a little bit of what's going on. And so, um, just walking them through it. Right. Um, uh, you know, Hey, you know, catch me up to speed, what's going on. And they'll share with you. Um, uh, a few of them are, are a very similar story. Um, you know, got either got injured or had to do some kind of, um, um, medical procedure, fell behind on my payments. And, um, and now, you know, the home is, is at risk of foreclosure. Um, so, so what I, I just take them through, there's eight steps that are eight options that they have. Um, so first we go through, you know, you know, are you looking to keep the home? Are you looking to get rid of it? Where are you? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, and if they, if they're trying to keep the home, we'll go through, there's, you know, the first one, easiest one, right? Family members, uh, personal loan, right? Can you get, can you reach out to a brother, sister, mother, um, you know, anyone, and, and a lot of times there is someone, but there's a little bit of shame behind the foreclosure, right? Um, sometimes there's not anybody, um, but sometimes there's someone and just kind of coaching them through like, hey, you know, um, 
you can reach out to them. You could see about, you know, um, getting a small loan. Um, so that that's literally, that's the easiest, best way to stop it is if you have a, a family member, friend, family that can support you and then you pay them back, best way to do it, right? Um, if they can't do that, then the, the next two would be taking it to market. A lot of time, uh, times the time frame um, it determines whether or not you could do that, right? If your home is getting sold at auction in 30 days, it's going to be hard to find buyers. So, um, uh, so taking it to market is a really great option. I know a ton of realtors, um, great ones uh, that we refer them to, and they can kind of, you know, guide them through that, the, the retail process. Um, the second option, second to that would be renting it out, right? Can you rent out a part of or the, the, the whole home that way you're not losing it? Um, and, and a lot of people don't, you know, being a landlord is running a business. So a lot of people are really not ready to step into that. Um, so, um, so if that's not an option, then we start, we just start going down the, the list. Right. Um, and pause me if you have any questions, but, um, the, the next one would be private money. We have hard money that we can get. It's interest only loans. They're usually 12% interest and it's usually a two year, maybe three year period, but there's an, there's an appetite for it. There's some guys out there will take a second lien and we'll give them whatever, 20, 30, whatever they are behind in arrears um, to catch up. Um, that recently hasn't been, um, hasn't panned out too much. Uh, mm -hmm. Just money's really tight right now. A lot of our hard money guys um, are you know, not, not really open to a lot of second positions right now. Um, so that's kind of a tough one. Um, but those are all kind of on the, on the keeping, keeping the home side of things. Then if, if they just don't want to keep it, or if none of those are an option, then we move into, all right, let's, if you're going to have to get rid of your home, right. Because the bank is going to come take it or, you know, we're, instead of worst case scenario, let me walk you through some options, right? And, and you know, in one of the options, we're just like everybody else, we can offer cash, right? Um, and every investor is different, but most investors will take whatever the true value of it is, multiply it by 0.6, and that's what they're going to offer you. That's exactly what we do um, in, in, in that scenario. Um, we're not more competitive than anyone else in, in that sense. Um, so cash offer, definitely an option. Um, the next one would be uh, what's called subject to. Um, so we can take over the mortgage subject to. So let's say you got a home couple year into a home a couple years ago or last year, and you don't really have a lot of equity, right? Because if your home is valued, if you got it for 425 um, and you're selling 425, you're not going to get 425 <laughs> after all the closing costs, right? Um, so uh, so we can just take over the mortgage subject too. Even if it's a little bit underwater, um, we're long-term investors. So we can take it over, um, service that debt and um, and make sure that the, and, and this is all contractual with the home seller that are a partner mm -hmm. um, and make sure that everything is taken care of. And a lot of times we give them uh, some amount of cash to get to their next place, right? Help, help them move. Or we have, have partners that have moving companies and, and all of that. So, so that's that's really neat. Um, if, if you only, this is what's happening a lot right now. This is a very different kind of downturn than before is a lot of people have equity in their homes, right? So I've seen situations where someone is defaulting on a hundred thousand, uh, loan on a 600,000 property. Right. Um, and, and that can give us some wiggle room to work with the bank and, and all of that. And, and you tight money is really tight right now. Like lenders are really, um, yeah. uh, their, their standards are really high. Um, so, so sometimes that's an option, sometimes it's not. And then that's, that's kind of where, where we can come in. We, we can do what's called a, a hybrid, right? So if there's enough equity, we'll take over the mortgage subject to, um, but let's say just for numbers sake, a, a million dollar property um, and somebody owes 500 on it still. So we'll take that 500,000, but we're not going to short the seller all 500,000 worth of equity, right? So uh, what we do is we ask them to be our bank um, and we uh, we just like a regular bank in an ideal world, they're giving me 30 year 
as close to zero down as possible. Sometimes we factor in um, a buffer on the purchase price. So I could pay above asking, um, but I can't do above asking and then a high interest, right? Yeah, so I, I kind of yeah. trade off the interest. Yeah. Um, so so, so, so there, there's multiple ways to split. So that's, that's subject to seller finance. That's an option that we have that a lot of people aren't too familiar with. Um, and, uh, and that's really, it, it's night and day between just like a cash offer and getting, you know, giving up a ton of your equity. Um, and, and that's the case right now is ev most everyone I'm talking to has a lot of equity in their home. So they're in the position where they're like either going to give up a lot of equity to sell cash or give up their property and still give up all their equity or, you know, um, they can also work with us and, and do that subject to yeah. self finance. Um, so you the go through way, all those yeah. great scenarios. Yeah. Um, it's emotional. And like we talked about, so why is Lewis doing this? Cause it's gotta be stressful for you too. Yeah. Um, so the big, the biggest driving force is, um, I, er, early in the year, I found out I was going to have my first, uh, my first child. Um, so, uh, we're having a baby girl and, um, and so that kind of lit a fire on my butt. Um, so I've been, I've been, you know, wanting to, um, just take matters into our own hands, develop a little bit of passive income. And we've, we've managed properties before, so we know it's not that passive. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that, that's kind of the, the driving force behind starting it. Um, I would say now that I've, I've been doing this for about two months, the, the interactions with, with, um, with the sellers. And, um, and now I, I don't think I, and stop doing this. There's such a need. There's so many people that really don't know what their options are. Um, and, and I don't, this might be a little bit of a stretch, but I really don't think there should be any foreclosures going on with all of these tools that we have. Yeah. Um, there really shouldn't be people losing out on all that equity. So um, we can help them cash out and we treat them with dignity, like as if there are our family members. Right. Um, and, and, and just help them move on to the next the next thing. So so I, I it's really rewarding. And and they they share yeah. they some of these people are going through some of the, you know, the bank is kind of giving them the their lenders giving them the runaround. They maybe sold the debt to another lender, and that, there's a lot of that going on too. Um, so just being there, listening to them and understanding what they're trying to accomplish um is, is very rewarding. It's difficult. They share with me some things about, you yeah. know their kids and their grandkids and their aspirations. Um, but, um, but it's even when we don't purchase anything and even when they, cause some of them, they've been able to either do a bankruptcy or, um, you know, work with their bank. Um, it is still very, very rewarding when, you know, they go, Hey, you know, thanks for just helping me out or thanks for giving me this resource or thanks for connecting me with, um, this person. Su super, super rewarding. So, that's uh, yeah, that's kind of what that. Yeah, I can hear the passion right in your voice. Yeah, it's fantastic. What's the market like with foreclosures? I mean, how many are out there? You're in Nevada. What's the number of foreclosures that are out there? Is it a lot? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so that's a great question. Um, there's a lot out here. There's a lot. It depends on the market. You know, like Vegas has a ton. Um, I, Vegas also has higher, you know, vacancy rate. But um so I'll give you some numbers. So we get emails from title companies when these notice of defaults come out. They usually give us an email twice a month. Um, when I first started tuning into it, I wasn't actively hitting them up in January, but I was kind of tuning in. Um, it was about three or four that would come out every two weeks. Um, and they were mostly um, mobile, mobile home, um, uh, like C-class assets. Um, and then February, it was like five or six and it was, you know, um, some mobile homes, but then some also single family residential, um, some apartments, condos. Um, but it started, I saw a couple of single family residentials, then March, April, it was like six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and so it's been kind of picking up a little bit. It's not, it's not this huge, it, we're not in 2008, right? Yeah. Like back yeah. then we were sitting, I think it was like 9 trillion in debt and like 9 trillion in equity. And we're at 12 trillion in debt, in debt right now, but 31 trillion in equity. So it, it's, it's a very different, um, 
uh so so it's not it's not huge it's not like yeah. you know the real estate marketing is kind of, it's not um but there's enough enough people with uh with the need that we can we can yeah really help. and whether it's three or 30 that's opportunity for you to help three to 30 or whoever number is right now what you do can, do can you just do it in nevada or can you do it in california where i'm at or other locations yeah so um it, it, you know, shout out to sub two. Um, the the method we picked three markets. Um, so we're we're here in uh in I want to say Reno, Las Vegas, because you know we do Everybody also knows. touch Vegas. Um, and then we're in Phoenix. Um, and then we're in the Bay Area. So so those are you know our focus. Um, I, the wholesaling crew that I I I work with here. They only do this area, right? So it just kind of depends. Yeah. Um, your but those three people, can, those Phoenix, Reno, Vegas, and Bay Area can reach out to you. I want the audience to hear that in case they know somebody in those areas or live there and going yeah. through foreclosure. I want them to reach out to you. And if they do, how can they find you? Steve, anyone anywhere in the continental U.S. can reach out to me. Um, yeah. I have a network of sub two students that I can connect them to that are active in Florida, Atlanta, you just name a state and there, there's some, there's someone there. So if there's anyone in need, reach out to, to have them reach out to me and I will connect them with someone from my, from my community. Cause they, yeah. they're really willing to help They're go givers for the right. most part. I love that about the community. So um, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You can help so any, anyone. How would you like them to reach out to your phone number, email, you want to shout out uh, the contact info so they can reach out to you. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Yeah. So I, <laughs> um, they can call me directly. Um, if, if you're, so I have three phone numbers. I used to live in the East coast, but if you're in the East coast, you want to call a 202 number. Uh, my cell phone is 202-207-8185. Um, uh, I'm, I'm based out of Reno. Um, so I'm here, I'm in Pacific standard time. Um, my Reno phone number is 775 two nine eight six nine seven nine and then um my bay area number is four oh eight eight one three four five one five take a pick call whichever one you want They'll yeah that's great up. great way to get a hoyer i can't believe you remembered all those numbers that's fantastic <laughs> i'm going to do something else for you lewis because i, th I think foreclosures are it's a problem the problem yeah. because it's sinking families they don't know what to do you get so i'm going to send the first three people that reach out to you that mentioned in the show or mentioned my name, I'm going to send them a gift. So nice. listeners, if you reach out to them, just mention doing business with servants, hard podcast, tell them you heard Lewis on here and he'll give me your contact info. I'll reach out, get your mailing address. I'm going to ship something out. That's how much I want to put my money where my mouth is in regards to this, because talking to Lewis previously about this, it's a problem and you've got a way to solve it. And it's doing business with servants, heart. This is as servant as you can be. When you start losing money and where am I going to live next? You don't have money. You don't have a home, a roof over your head. It's scary. So you're solving that problem many ways. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're not in a rush, right? Like I, I don't need to purchase a house yesterday. Um, we could walk away from any of the deals. We're not necessarily in a rush. So um, there are times where we can help them give them the time that they need to move out 30, 60, 90 days sometimes. Um, and, th and then we, you know, just write that off as holding costs. So um, yeah. Yeah. We That's pretty awesome. So we Thank spoke you. earlier before the show, you have some stories, pick one of those great yeah. stories and let's hear about how you help somebody. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So this one, this is, I'll, I'll share, I'll share my, my first sit down. Um, I went door knocking with, with another uh, sub two um, uh, student, his name's uh, Cookie Sanchez, and um, his name's Alberto, but he goes by Cookie. So we go door knocking, and this is my first time doing it. It's his first time doing it, and uh, you know, there's no one there. We're leaving little three by five index handwritten. You know, I'm looking for my next home. I like your house. Call me. Um, and uh, and nothing. You know, we just dropped off a bunch of little index cards. And the next day I get a, I get a text like right around, I want to say like five or so. And it's like, Oh, Hey, we, you know, saw that you're looking for a house and um, 
you know, we're interested. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, you know, she's like, can we talk at like seven? And I was like, okay, perfect. We can, I can do that. And then um, seven comes around. She's like, hey, we're not home yet. We're coming from dinner. And, um, and I, I, what I had assumed, I should have clarified, but I assumed that we we're just going to talk on phone, but I was like, I'm a lot better in person. I'm going to drive over there. Let's go. Um, so I go, so she, so they're thinking I'm going to go to their house. So I go to their house. I sit down with them. I get there at like eight 30 and this is, I want to say it was like a Saturday or Sunday. Um, so there was a real need there. Right. Um, um, I get there, uh, and, you know, they share with me what, what where they're at. And it was one of those, um, the gentleman, let's call him Tim. That's not his actual name, but let's call yeah, him Tim. That's right. Um, he, um, what had happened? So he had done construction. And in Nevada, they, you don't get a uh, supplemental or disability. So, and he hadn't, he didn't have one of those insurance plans, um, the supplemental plans. So um, he tweaked his back or there was some, some, um, injury. And so he had to take, he took off, he was going to take about six months off of work for the procedure and everything. Um, and then he shared with me, they shared with me that both of their kids are addicts and, um, partway through the healing process, he got into an altercation with one of, one of his sons. And then that messed up a few other things. So six months turned to 11 months, there was no income. And so they were in a real, um, they were in a real pickle and they were, their home was about to get sold about 10 days from when I met with them. Um, so, I, you know, I'm like calling my partners. I'm like, okay, let's, let's get, you know, R Ricky is my, my partner here from um, uh, Easy Homes here in town. I called them, get him on the phone. He's like, okay, we can get on the phone with the bank tomorrow. We can, you know, if we show them a con. So we start deploying everything to stop it. Right. Um, and uh, one of the people that he was talking to was actually a um, bankruptcy attorney. Uh, so they went, they went through, he went, he went ahead and went through bankruptcy. That's one of the options, bankruptcy and, you know, foreclosure, uh, deed in lieu foreclosure is like the, the, the two, the two or three that you don't want to do because they stay on your record for so long. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of time, depending on the um, uh, foreclosure, it just delays at 60 days most of the time. But I think he was able, I don't know exactly which one he got. It sounds like he got the one that forgave a lot of debt. Um, and those are really hard to come by. So I was super happy for him. Um, but yeah, that's one of the ones that didn't pan out. But they shared with me about the whole, how they got there. Um, they take care of of their grandchild um, and he's adorable. Um, so, you know, at, at one point, the his wife was texting me like, hey, you know, the only option, you know, it, it, there's some tensions there, right? So the only option we want is if we get to keep the house, right? And and this and that, she gave me the whole, you know, about their kids and everything. So um, just, just un, you know, and, and all I could say is like, you know, I th this is what, what we can do. And I'm sorry, this is a situation, but it worked out. It really worked out. And they got it. They, they did a bankruptcy and they, they're still there. So um, hopefully it wasn't one that just delayed it 60 days, which will be a resource if it was just that, but, um, but yeah, that was, that was a really, that was a really cool story. Um, and I, yeah, I was just grateful for them to share and just, um, hey man, that, that's a yeah. powerful story. It and was, I'm sure there's cool. more and more of those and that's what you can do. Uh, we're running out of time here because you have such a great program. We could talk all day about this. I want to thank you for being on the show. Cause like I said, yeah. this is a problem. You've got an answer. And if you can save people's lives, but I'll keep their home like this couple, keep a roof over their head to win. It's a huge win for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I thank you. And God bless that you're doing that. But if I can ask one more favor, yep. can, can you give my audience a piece of advice that's got you through your journey in life? Yeah. Here, here's here's a really here's a really good one. Okay. Um there, there's a delay from when you start doing activity and you have something to give an expertise and you're just giving ref whatever is referrals, helping people. There's a delay between when you start doing that and when those people actually get helped out to when you actually get helped out. So um, I, I would just give a couple words of encouragement, which is to say, you know, help people out 
it comes back around to you. It just takes some time. Um, but that time builds character, first of all, but it, it, it comes back multifold. So I would say still go out, help people. You'll, you'll, if you help enough people reach their goals, you'll, you'll hit yours as well.